10, we're going to be looking at verses 12 and 13. Starting at verse 12, it says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he is, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There has no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of his that you may be able to bear it. Let us pray. Father, I just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for the words coming forth. I thank you, Lord God, as, as the men and women and children of God begin to study your word, live through your word. Uh, let your preacher decrease so that you may increase. Let me walk in the word of your word that I may be edifying, building, establishing, and guiding the men and women of God. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Let the house say amen. All right. What we are going to be dealing with this evening, we're going to be dealing with dealing with temptation. Amen. We're going to be dealing with temptation, and I expect the little kids to be respectful. Okay, you're in the house of God, and I expect the adults to be respectful. You must understand this is just not a place that you eat a meal. Once the man of God or the woman of God comes up here to talk, it turns into a sanctuary. That means we are asking the presence of God. Please respect and honor the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. 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 I appreciate that. So we're going to be talking about dealing with temptation. Temptation refers to in the Bible as testing, trying, or enticing to evil. But the word has narrowed in our meaning in modern times. Modern translations use testing, proving, trying, or tempting. Now, as you saw, that enticing of evil was taken out. But a lot of times, we are tempted in ways that we don't want to be tempted, but it's usually enticed to do evil. Amen? Actually, there's one of the young ladies here that asked me about it, and she don't know. I prayed about this thing. And I listen to everybody, to be honest, because you don't know. God can use anybody to bring a word to me. And I was wondering what I was going to preach on or whatever. And a young lady asked me, you know, I'm dealing with a lot of temptation. And I said, you know what, maybe I'll go ahead and speak about that. Pray about it, God gave me this message. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, the Greek word for, temp uh, for temptation is parasmos. That's how you pronounce it. Okay? And it also means, and it also means, uh, the trial of man's fidelity, integrity. Please stop moving these chairs. Thank you. Children, thank you. All right, the Greek word is perosmos. The trial of man's fidelity, integrity, virtue, and consistency. An enticement to sin or be tempted whether arising from desires from our own outward circumstances. Now, what does that mean? Arising from our own outward circumstances. A lot of temptations, we don't get tempted until we see it. Amen. Or we know it's on its way. Or it's inside of us. That's why we deal with addiction. Because once we get addicted with something, the temptation comes from inward to outward. Because you get a what? Craving for it. Amen. Amen. I don't care whether it's alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, whatever. We all got our issues concerning those types of temptations. Amen? Amen. Amen. Another word for it is the condition of things or mental state by which we are enticed to sin <coughs> or to lapse from the faith of holiness. So temptation takes you away from the holiness of God. It also leads you to adversities, afflictions, trouble. And why this? That trouble is sent by God and serving to test or prove one's character in their faith and holiness. So God will send a temptation or tempt you to see whether or not you're truly faithful to him or whether you're truly trying to walk holy before him. And we're going to cover all these scriptures. We're going to cover all these scriptures because one of the big things in the Bible, a lot of people say that's a contradiction in God and the word of God. You know, one side says God don't tempt no man, then another side of the Bible says God does tempt a man. But because we're reading it and understanding it in our own English language, we think they both mean the same, but they don't. Because one says something in Hebrew, another one says something in Greek, and then we need to find out what's going on the way God says it. So he wants you to search it out. But if you ain't born again, you know, you're not going to see the mystery, or you're not going to hunt it down. Amen? Amen. All right. 
Temptation, for example, or that is, is of God by man, rebellion against God, by which his power and justice are, as it were, put to the proof and challenged to show themselves. So God put you through that proof and challenged you to see whether your faith is good. Well, God knows everything. Why would he test my faith? It's not for him. He does know. But if you want to stand before man, man want to see God in you. How can you talk Jesus all day long and I see no power? I see no justice. I see no righteousness. I see nothing that you're saying about Jesus in you. But the moment you get tempted, believe me, I know I've been in plenty and you know, I'm going to have to tell my experience again. Being in the crack house preaching. Nobody paid me any mind. Why? I'm speaking the word, but I'm smoking with it. How in the world are you going to accept the God that I serve and you see me getting high too? You see me sleeping with women too. Oh, he's a phony. Ain't no God in him. But that's the trial. But then he also used Job to say, okay, are you going to learn to trust me? And he gave devil permission. But you know, the devil has to give permission every time he attacks you. Y'all be saying, oh, the devil's bothering me. No, the devil went up. Every time God calls a meeting with the angels, he go up too. And God says, who? And he says, who can I pick on? God says, go ahead and try that one. Try that one. God has to give him permission to do it. Hmm. So y'all wonder, well, the devil bothered me. Have you ever thought, well, maybe God's going to invite you to pray? Because he can't do it without the permission of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because it's either from the permission of the Lord that you belong to him, or you already belong to him, and he don't need his permission. You know why he don't need his permission? Because he knows you don't believe in Jesus Christ. So he don't need God's permission. <coughs> but he does need God's permission when you're one of God's children. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. Because a lot of people say, well, Jesus was a man of no sin. That is true. But it also tells us this, that he was tempted in every way that we were. So let's look at it. And I'll prove it in Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. Hebrews 4, 15 says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched, with the feelings of our infirmity. See, he's touched with the feelings of our infirmity, the feelings of our sin. But was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without what? Sin. Amen. So he can relate to you. He was tempted but never did. Amen. Amen. Because if he had did it, you know, I, I was watching Pastor Rosado's video last night, and I saw that he said, if Jesus had sinned, we wouldn't be saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. When he was talking about the Trinity and explaining it, you know? And he's exactly right. Jesus was, born, Jesus was born of a human flesh. We couldn't be saved. We couldn't thank God. Amen? Amen. Amen. I thank God for that. Go to chapter 2 of Hebrews. Let's look at something else here. Chapter 2 of Hebrews. Hebrews 4.15 was the first one where he was tempted like we are. And now we're going to look at another verse here. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 17 and 18 says, Wherefore, in all things it be behoove him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of who? The people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted. Look at that. He was even tempted. Mm -hmm. He is able to secure them that are what? Tempted. So him being tempted, said it good that he is able to secure it for you. Amen? Amen. But let's look at a real good story. Because Jesus had to be tempted. Amen. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew 4. And I think last week I was talking about when we looked at the armors of God. And I was telling y'all what the sword of the spirit represented. Y'all remember that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that the sword of the spirit represented your tongue. Amen. And now we're going to look at that story a little bit closer. Because the sword of the spirit is a Greek word called the rhema word. R-H-E-M-A. Rhema. And it means to give a specific word. But if you don't have the word in you, you can't give a specific word. If you haven't read your Bible, you don't have a specific word. You don't even have a sword. You just have a book. Amen? Amen? So, let's go to um, 4. Let's just start at verse 1. Then, chapter 4, Matthew 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Into the wilderness to be what? Temple yeah. of the devil. Now, it didn't say the devil took him out here, did it? Mm -hmm. Look at that closely. It said the Spirit. What Spirit? Yeah. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit took him out there. So, y'all think the devil took Be tested by the devil, to be tested by the devil, to be tried by the devil. 
to be proved by the devil. Verse 2. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter, but that's what the devil, that's another name for the devil. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be turned into bread. That's what he was saying. If you be born again, let me see what you're going to do. Yeah, here's some money. Here's some alcohol. Here's some fire money. If you be of the Son of God. See, I tell you, the devil will bring you blessings too, and you be thinking it's God. Better be careful. All right? So he tells Jesus, turn these stones into bread. But why did Jesus answer? Verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written. Now, it is written. If I were you, he's quoting the Bible. He's giving the devil a rhema word. He's specifically cutting him with the Bible. Write down Deuteronomy 8 and 3, because that's what he's quoting. So he looks at the devil and quotes Deuteronomy 8 and 3 and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by everything out of the mouth of God. God. See, the devil came at him, and he came right back at me. All right, watch this again. The devil ain't give up. See, you need to understand the devil's persistent. He's persistent. He's not going to give up. He ain't got nothing to lose. If you were somebody who ain't got nothing to lose, and you know your destiny is hell, are you going to keep on fighting until you get there? Amen. You ain't got nothing to lose. Amen. <laughs> nothing at all. Verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into a holy city, and sitteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. Right? Yeah. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, we're going to try him again. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written. Now, he's quoting scripture. He's quoting. Ah. Now you see the rhema fight. They're giving each other specific words. A sword fight through the what? Now, the Bible, the New Testament, as we know today, had not been written yet. Amen? Amen. So ain't nobody got no Bibles out there. So the Bible can be your sword. All they have are what was written in them. So that even lets you know the demons know the word of God. <laughs> so watch this. Read verse 6 again. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest thou at any time dash thy foot against a stone. Now he's quoting Psalms 91, verse 12. If y'all want to match it up, write it down. Psalms 91, verse 12. They're having a duel. <laughs> the devil quote the scripture, Jesus quote the scripture. Amen. And the spirit that he not give away. <laughs> now watch Jesus' response. Verse 7. Jesus said unto him, It is written. Come on now. It is written again. Thou shalt not tempt or try the Lord thy God. What is he quoting? Deuteronomy 6.16. <laughs> Now, he's quoting right back with the word. Deuteronomy 6.16 for that verse. Hmm. Then verse 8. Again, the devil take him up into an exceedingly high mountain and show him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. i got to stop right there. Hmm. But there's another translation called Kenneth Peace. And remember, our Bibles are just translation. You don't get the emphatic word of God until you go and look it up in the Hebrew, Chaldean, or Greek, or Aramaic. And that's Korean Greek. But in this particular, this was a guy who wrote nothing but the New Testament, took the Greek language, and put it out in our language totally. His name is Kenneth Weiss. And when I looked this up in the Kenneth Weiss translation, this is what the devil is telling him. In that verse where he says, bow down and worship me in verse 9, he's telling Jesus, not only to bow down like this, there was a way that they meant by bow down. He was telling Jesus, I will give you the entire world because the devil has the power. Amen. He is still the prince of the atmosphere. He is the what? Prince of this world. Amen. See? God. We don't own it yet. He still owns this world, Amen. people. Yes, All right. Amen. But he told Jesus, if you will get down on your knee, touch your head to the ground, and worship toward me, I will give you the world. Amen. So, who do that five times a day? Muslims. Hello. Pray eastward. But they don't know they're praying eastward to a false god. That's why Jesus said, I sit in the north, but when I return, I'll return from the east. Just to prove you was praying to the wrong god. Yeah. But he told the devil, if you were bound, <laughs> touching your head to the ground and worship toward me, I give you the word. And the translation said this. Now, the next verse in the translation said that Jesus looked at him and said, devil, get away from me and keep going. Amen. That's the way it came out. <laughs> but let's look at what it said here in verse 10. Then Jesus said unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is Say it. 
as often as you can. Let's keep going. Verse 11. Then the devil left him. Then the devil leave of him. And behold, angels came and did what? Ministered unto him. So apparently, he won the war. Apparently, he won that war. And he taught us how to do it too. Because word was inside of him. So don't say, you know, you couldn't fight that temptation. When our Lord said it came down here and put on a body and showed you exactly and even wrote it in direction for you. Bible, believers, instructions before leaving earth. He gave you the instructions. Amen. 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 Go to Luke chapter. No, go to Matthew 26. Matthew 26. Let's look here. He gave us the recipe. Matthew 26, verse 41. But he also understood this. What does it say there? Matthew 26, verse 41. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. For the what? Spirit indeed is willing, but the what? Flesh is weak. We are wrapped in corruptible flesh. That's why I love the fact that back here during his temptation, he was fasting. He was turning down that food. He was turning down everything. He's the only one I know he can go on. I heard a few people doing it for 40 days and 40 nights. But he he was more stronger in that moment. Because how could you be so hungry as a turning? Now the devil knew his power crying, turning his body to the bread. The devil must have knew your power. But Jesus still said, that's tempting, but guess what? Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that you see. That's what's going to keep you alive. Amen. 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 But the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen. Turn it over to God. Turn it over to God. Go to Luke <coughs> chapter, chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. I hope y'all getting something out of this. Luke chapter 11. And look at verse 4. Luke 11, 4. And we pray this all the time. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is what intended to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from what? Evil. So God says we need to pray that all the time. Help us in our temptations. Because we're still made of corruptible flesh. You're going to always do something wrong in this flesh. That's why prayer is so important. That's why studying your word is so important. That's why submitting it under God is so important. You know, there was a brother here tonight, Bully, who helped me with something to let me see. He didn't even know it, but then he figured it out. Humble yourself, Warren. Right. Oh, and it was a little tiny thing, but I realized it was still big because my brother saw it. And that also told me that he loved me enough to remind me of it. I'm no greater than him. He refused to do what I asked him to do because he was right. Amen. You know, see, I like it, Bully, but I'll be real. But it humbled my heart to realize, you know what, I thank God that he was willing to tell me, Warren, you're wrong. What you're thinking. Amen. Thank you, Willie. Amen. When you got people like that in your life, receive it. Don't be so prideful and ready like, you ain't got no business to tell me that. No. I went right in there and said, man, because that was my attitude for a few weeks and he had been recognizing it and said, Warren, I'm not doing it. And you don't need to be doing that either. Amen? Amen? I'm just using that as an example because I love using me as an example of a person who has fallible. I'm fallible. We're fallible human beings. And the more and more I tell on me, the more and more the devil loses. That's right. You have to get to a place of being able to tell on yourself and the devil loses. Don't be so prideful. He, if you speak out, look, I got pride, pride. I got a lust pride. And God help me. You need to get off your door to help me. I ain't going to stop. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> but covering it up all the time, I ain't gonna work like that. Somebody just walked by and said, hello, you ready to fight? Because you've been keeping that stuff inside. Let it out. Amen. Amen. Go to Luke 22. Luke 22. And find a prayer partner. <coughs> you brothers in here who stay, man, y'all need to find a guy y'all uh, agree with outside of sin and, and touch and agree with them and pray. Say, we're gonna pray this time every now. I don't care what's going on. Drop the diamond. And said, you know, at this hour, we're going to pray together and defeat the enemy. Amen. And watch the enemy try to turn up the fire. Or try to make you busy. Yourself, Lord, going to pray. Somebody will come and cause you issues, and you got to say, 
no, this is the hour we all pray, no matter what. To what? Fight temptation in my life. And I need your help to do it, sister. I need your help to do it, brother. Amen. Amen. Agree with somebody. Go to Luke 22, looking at verses 40 to 46. And when he was at a place, he said unto them, Pray that you enter not to temptation. Now this is at the time he's getting ready to be crucified. They were coming to betray him and crucify him. But he came out and he told them, Come on, go with me and pray. And he went off and prayed. And he came back and these people were asleep. Watch what happened. Verse 41. And he was withdrawn from a valley, stones cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Now, in another uh, um, synoptic version of this, it said he prayed it three times. Right? And I truly believe, because he had told them all the time that he will have to die and be crucified, right? Amen. So why would he be there praying the same thing about a cup? So I asked myself, and this, if y'all can grab this revelation, this is what the Lord told me because Warren has a big mouth. And back then, Warren would judge all kinds of folk. Warren would judge the church. Warren would judge anybody. Because Warren didn't want nobody recognizing his sin. Amen. So I would judge you on yours. Hell, see, I got to keep it real. So I said, Lord, what is this cup? Because I'm a leader. I was a leader of a ministry. And I did all these things. But yet my mouth, I had no tactfulness. I couldn't hide sin. You know, it's black and white. I'm going to tell you the truth whether you like it or not. Right? And the Lord said, go back to Revelation and look up at that cup here. And I found out that cup represented the cup of judgment. Mm -hmm. So, my, my understanding that Jesus gave me at the time I was going through this is that take this cup from me. He was saying, take the cup of judgment that I have to pour upon the children of Israel because I'm a sinner to hell. Amen. He wasn't afraid to go to the cross. He knew he had to go there. Mm -hmm. But he didn't want to judge anybody to send them to hell. So he prayed that three times. Father, take this cup from me. Because in the end, he's going to call you up going to judge you, and if you're not right, or your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're going to hell. And Jesus loved us so much that he don't want to sin us there. So that made me realize the only one who could pour out a cup of judgment was him. I had no right to pour judgment on nobody, no matter what they do. Amen? Amen. Keep reading. That was a little break there. Verse 43. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Lord, have mercy. Because he knew what he had to go through. And being in agony, he prayed more what? Earnestly. Now, it even said, like, let's keep reading. And his sweat was as it were great drops of what? Blood falling down to the ground. Could you imagine that agony? That you're so agonized about sending someone to hell? Or people always say, you know, he was afraid to go to the cross. Maybe he was a little bit. But I believe that agony was for, for, for mankind. You know, I got to send you to hell. Father, hear my prayer. I don't want to send him there. Take this cup from me. Amen. Verse 45. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them what? Sleeping. Sleeping for sorrow. And said unto them, Why sleep you? Rise and pray, lest you enter into what? Temptation. So that tells me every time you get ready to go through something, the devil will put you to sleep. Amen. When you know you've got your mind made up and your heart is fixed Amen. and you're ready to go with Jesus all the way, I'm going to put you to sleep. Amen. Amen. Some of you sleep during services. Because that was the time, that was the thing you needed to hear. That was the thing you needed to hear. 